Hometown Ghost Stories contains serious and often distressing events and is not intended for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Abraham Lincoln. You may have heard of him. He served as the 16th President of the United States from 1861 to 1865. He was vital in his role of preserving the Union during the Civil War and kicked off the process that led to the end of slavery in the USA. What you may not know about Lincoln is that he had a dark and mysterious side. In his final years, he often dreamt of his own death. He slept very little and took no vacations in the years leading up to his assassination. A close friend of the president had written down something disturbing that Lincoln had told him back in 1865. Quote, About ten days ago, I retired very late. I soon began to dream. There seemed to be a death-like stillness about me. Then I heard subdued sobs, as if a number of people were weeping. I thought I left my bed and wandered downstairs. I arrived at the East Room. Before me was a catafalque, on which rested a corpse wrapped in funeral vestments. Around it were stationed soldiers who were acting as guards and there was a throng of people, some gazing mournfully upon the corpse, whose face covered, others weeping pitifully. Who's dead in the White House? I demanded of one of the soldiers. The president was his answer. He was killed by an assassin. This wasn't the first time that President Lincoln saw his own death, and this would only be the beginning of mysterious and unexplained happenings inside the White House, where many people believe that the ghost of Abraham Lincoln still resides. I'm Jesse Wilkins, and this is Celebrity Hauntings, The Ghost of Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was born on February 12, 1809 in Hardin County, Kentucky. His parents were both from Virginia, and by all accounts, he came from very humble beginnings. The Lincolns moved to Indiana when Abraham was just eight years old, to a wild region, as he described it, with wild bears and animals living in the woods. On October 5, 1818, Abraham's mother died of a milk sickness when he was just nine years old. He spent his childhood working on the farm, but never really enjoyed the farmer's life. He was more interested in reading books and learning. As he grew up, he made an extraordinary effort to attain knowledge while still having to work on the farm as well as working as a storekeeper in New Salem, Illinois. He would go on to be a captain in the Black Hawk War and spend eight years in the Illinois legislature. He was described as ambitious, restless, tall, smart, and strong. In fact, he gained reputation for his strength. By winning a wrestling match versus the renowned leader of the ruffians known as the Clary's Grove Boys. So do what you will with that information. Abe's first love was Ann Rutledge, but before they could get engaged, she died of typhoid fever on August 25th, 1835. He lapsed into a brief state of depression and melancholy that led to an emotional breakdown a few years later. Eventually, time would heal those wounds, and Lincoln would go on to marry Mary Todd. They would have four children, three of which would die at a young age. His son Edward died at four years old, and his son William would die of a fever inside the White House during his first term as president. Their other son Tad also died at age 18, but this was after Lincoln's death. Abraham was hit especially hard by his son William's death, and he would spend hours inside the crypt where his son was buried, just sitting there and crying. In 1858, he ran for senator against Stephen A. Douglas and lost. However, he gained national reputation, which helped him win the Republican nomination for president in 1860, ultimately going on to win the general election and becoming the 16th president of the United States of America. His presidency would be an eventful one, to say the least, with the whole Civil War thing. I won't go too much into the specifics of the war. We covered a lot of that in our Gettysburg episode, and we're here to talk about the ghost of Abraham Lincoln. So his wife Mary had a strong belief in the supernatural, which influenced Abe's interest in spiritualism. However, he always remained a bit skeptical on the topic. Mary insisted on hosting seances inside the White House in attempts to contact their dead sons. Now apparently these seances weren't particularly successful or very eventful at all, but it's believed that Abraham Lincoln attended at least two of these seances. 
Now, we mentioned earlier that Lincoln had seen his own death in a dream. He even saw his own funeral, and one of his guards had told him that he was killed by an assassin. This actually wasn't the first time that he would see his own death. Soon after his election in 1860, he had seen a double image of his face reflected in a mirror in his house in Springfield, Illinois. One image was of his own face, and the other was a pale, ghostly image of himself. He stood there looking into these two images and called his wife over. Mary came over to see what he was looking at, but she didn't see the same thing that he saw. She was very disturbed by what Lincoln told her. She believed that what he was seeing in the mirror was a prophecy. The clear image representing his first term as president, that he would live it out and it would be a successful term. The second ghostly pale white image of Abraham Lincoln represented his second term. And she believed that what he was seeing in the mirror that day was a prophecy that was saying he would not survive his second term as president of the United States of America. Unfortunately for everybody, this prophecy came true. On April 14th, 1865, President Abraham Lincoln visited Ford's Theater for a showing of Our American Cousin. He was shot in the head by John Wilkes Booth, and he died the next morning at 7.22 a.m. Since his death, it seems that Abraham Lincoln's ghost has never left the White House. First Lady Bird Johnson, wife of President Lyndon B. Johnson, told her press secretary that she felt Lincoln's presence one night while watching a TV program about his death. She noticed a plaque hanging above a fireplace. She had been in this room countless times, and she had never noticed this plaque before. She got up to see what it was. As she got closer to the fireplace, the room was getting colder. She didn't understand this. How come as she was getting close to the fire, the room was getting colder? What took her by surprise was the words that were on the plaque. The plaque was all about Abe Lincoln and his importance to the room that she was standing in. She felt an overwhelming sense of unease, to a point where she actually felt it necessary to tell her tale to Liz Carpenter, who relayed the story to author John Alexander, and thus, the tales of Abraham Lincoln's ghost haunting the White House was told to the masses. From there, the hauntings became a bit more clear and a lot more terrifying. Calvin Coolidge's wife, Grace Coolidge, was the first person to report actually seeing the ghost of Abraham Lincoln. She spotted the full-bodied apparition of Abraham Lincoln standing in the Oval Office, staring out the window. He had his arms behind his back as he was looking out over the Potomac. Ronald Reagan's dog Rex seemed to sense the ghost in the White House. He would reportedly bark at corners, and in one instance, he stood up on his hind legs, staring at the ceiling, which is something that he had never done before. Reagan believed that Rex was seeing a ghost, and he believed that this ghost was Abraham Lincoln. Reason being, there wasn't a room in the White House that Rex wouldn't enter, except for one room in particular, and that was Lincoln's bedroom. During FDR's presidency, Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands was visiting the White House. In the middle of the night, she got a loud knock at her door. Startled, she woke up thinking there might be some sort of an emergency. As she went over to the door and swung it open, there standing in front of her was Abraham Lincoln, top hat and all. She was so scared that she actually fainted. When she came to, she was lying on the bedroom floor and the ghost had vanished. Eleanor Roosevelt used Lincoln's bedroom as a study, and although she denied ever seeing the ghost for herself, she claimed that she always felt his presence there while working alone at night. She could feel him standing behind her and peering over her shoulder, almost as if he was looking over what she was working on. Abraham Lincoln was an avid reader throughout his entire life. Perhaps that didn't change in death. Winston Churchill was staying at the White House. One evening after climbing out of the bath, he spotted Lincoln's ghost standing by the fireplace. Abraham Lincoln was leaning against the mantel, and Winston Churchill was completely naked. He had nothing but a cigar in his hand. He tapped on the cigar and said to the ghost, Good evening, Mr. President. You seem to have me at a disadvantage. The ghost of Lincoln apparently laughed at this remark, and then he vanished. Other reports of Lincoln's ghost in the White House claim that his footsteps can be heard in the halls outside of the Lincoln bedroom. As told by Lillian Rogers Parks in her 1961 autobiography, My 30 Years Backstairs at the White House. President Harry Truman's daughter said she heard a specter rapping at the door of the Lincoln bedroom during her stay. And President Truman himself was also awakened by the same sounds while sleeping in the same room on a different night. Several eyewitnesses claimed to see the shadow of Abraham Lincoln lying on a bed in the Lincoln bedroom, which, we should clarify, was not actually where Abraham Lincoln slept. It's just called the Lincoln bedroom, but he held many of his meetings here. 
That doesn't mean he never actually fell asleep in this room, but he did not go to bed inside the Lincoln bedroom. Still, others claim that they see his ghost sitting on the edge of the bed, putting on his boots. Eleanor Roosevelt's secretary, Mary Eben, saw this ghost putting on his boots, and she ran screaming from the room. So apparently the White House is not the only place that Abraham Lincoln's ghost seems to visit. He reportedly also haunts his former home in Illinois. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to announce that we have our second ghost train here on Hometown Ghost Stories, Lincoln's Funeral Train. In 1865, the U.S. Railroad started work on a luxury steam locomotive to bring the president around. Abe would be assassinated before its completion, but after his death, they would finish the project and use it as a funeral train to bring Lincoln's dead body around the country to his 12 different funerals. Now, this would be the only time that the train would be used, and they would never use it again, calling it the Lincoln Memorial. Now, every year around the anniversary of his death, people claim to see the ghost train passing through their train stations. Witnesses claim to hear the train whistle. Then they see the funeral train pulling several carts, all of them, draped in black. Other witnesses have claimed to see skeletons riding in these carts. And one of the crazier claims is probably that these skeletons are actually playing instruments. Now, you can never hear the music that they're playing, but apparently they see these skeletons through the window. Most say the train passes right by the station, and others report seeing the train stop at the station for as long as 20 minutes. Abe's son William, who died of typhoid in 1862 inside the White House, also reportedly haunts the place. His ghost has been seen as recently as 1960, when Linda Johnson had a conversation with the ghostly boy before he vanished. And finally, we should mention this photo. Mary Todd Lincoln had this picture taken after the death of her husband, which appears to show the ghost of Abraham Lincoln standing behind her. The picture was believed to have been snapped in 1869, and the photographer, William H. Mumler, claimed that he did not know that the woman that he was taking a picture of was Mary Todd Lincoln until after the picture was developed. Apparently, she assumed the name of Mrs. Lindell. For audio listeners, I'll describe the picture. You have Mary sitting there, and there seems to be the ghost of Abraham Lincoln standing behind her with his hand on her shoulder. He's a very transparent kind of hard to see Abraham Lincoln, but you could see the beard and everything. It's clearly Abe. So this image has long been debunked or dismissed as being a double exposure. The man who snapped the pic was a full-time spirit photographer, mostly based out of New York in Boston. He spent most of his career taking advantage of people who lost loved ones in the Civil War. And he was eventually taken to court and tried for fraud and larceny, but a judge had acquitted him of these crimes. So needless to say, while this picture was very well circulated and very popular as a ghost photo, the fact that it was taken by a guy who was brought up on fraud charges for being a spirit photographer probably means it's a fake, still a cool creepy picture nonetheless. The last reported sighting of Abraham Lincoln's ghost was in the 1960s. Tony Savoy, who was the White House operations foreman, claimed to see his ghost sitting in a chair at the top of a flight of stairs inside the White House. So send us a tweet or leave a comment below on YouTube, tell us what you think. Do you think the ghost of Abraham Lincoln still walks the White House? Do you think there's any legitimacy to this ghost train story? Well, stick around as Rob, Dave, and myself discuss all of the hauntings and paranormal activity surrounding the ghost of Abraham Lincoln. I'm Jesse Wilkins, and this is Hometown Ghost Stories Celebrity Hauntings. going on folks welcome into hometown ghost stories the latest installment of celebrity hauntings today we're talking about the ghost of abraham lincoln i'm jesse wilkins i'm joined by rob coakley hello rob the ghost train one is very creepy i can't wait to dive into that a little bit love it and uh we're also joined by dave hello dave hello good to be here as always it's good to have you yeah the ghost train that's a that's an interesting one Let's start with the ghost train because I think it's kind of a lesser of the haunting. We do have our second official ghost train here, and it's mm. always fun to talk about ghost trains. And the story kind of gets wilder and wilder. So you have obviously people see the train coming. It's always around the anniversary of his death. And 
It's pulling several carts. All of these carts are draped in black. That's how it was when the funeral train went by. We included a few picture of, pictures of the train for audio listeners. You can Google images of the train. There's still a few of them circulating online. And you can see it. They have like a, there's like an actual picture of Abraham Lincoln on the front of the train. And then there are the carts, which are draped in black drapery, if you will. And, um, yeah, so that, that was an elegant way with words there, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that's that's why I'm here. That's why I paid the big bucks. But the I first train, so eloquent is the word you're looking for. Shut up, Dave. No one wants to hear from you. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks for uh, riding on my ghost train. Anyways, the so they hear they hear the train whistle, very similar to the last uh, ghost train that we covered, which I don't remember where that was. Where was the last ghost train? It was not oh, in the city that we covered. <laughs> um, North Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah. Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina. But the Working ghost train was actually in a, a, a nearby town. Anyways. So similar to that one, they would hear the, the train. Uh, they would hear the whistle. They would see the smoke. They would actually see the train show up to the station. And there's some varying accounts. So some accounts say that it goes right past the, tra- the, the train station before disappearing. And some say that it actually stops at the station for up to 20 minutes. Now, I'm no, I'm no expert here, although I pretend to be. I would assume that if this train was sitting there, a ghost train for 20 minutes, there would probably be some photos of it. But who's to say that the ghost train shows up in photos? And I don't want to discount anyone's accounting uh, of seeing a ghost train. But if I saw a ghost train fair point. parked at a train station for 20 minutes, I would find a way to take a picture even if I didn't have a camera on me. At that point, I mean, you have 20 minutes. You make a fucking oil painting of the thing, right? <laughs> I know, right? But um, there's that. And then there's the crazier claims that I don't know if I believe, but they are definitely super creepy and super awesome, which is that they actually see skeletons riding in the carts. And as these claims get deeper, they say that these skeletons can actually be seen playing instruments, which is absolutely awesome. That's a new first here on Hometown Ghost Stories is these ghost skeletons playing instruments. But they say you can never hear the music, which is a little bit of an eerie kind of... um, detail about the story yeah and there's a lot of detail with this so uh, you know there's so many ghost stories that we cover or like ghost sightings that we cover where they're so vague and there's almost nothing to talk about this one has so much detail and so many different layers ghost train skeleton specters being seen on the ghost train playing instruments but you can't hear them like that's a lot it is it's a lot to make up you know what i mean but it's almost too much yeah in a sense right like it's so because a lot of the ones that are that are scary and feel authentic, there's details, but they're not like to this extent. Yeah. You know, it, it feels like it almost feels like when we make up one of our stories on our campfire tales and we're all just doing something, we're just adding on to what's going on in the story. And it's like, yeah, so there's a ghost train coming down the tracks. It's draped in black drapes, he said eloquently along the way and then you jump in and you're like and there's skeletons in the windows and then jesse jumps in and they're playing instruments but you can't hear them like it just sounds like an urban legend to an extent it Um, actually sounds better than all of our campfire ghost stories how dare you (laughs) i'm just kidding there's gonna be there's gonna be silent music playing skeletons in every one of our ghost stories going forward Mm -hmm. because that is an awesome detail so that's that I i would like to see some evidence or hear some actual like testimony of these ghost trains or where or, does it say where like it's reported the same it seems to travel the same route that, okay. that makes his sense. funeral traveled so his ghost train or his not his ghost train but his funeral train and now the mm-hmm. ghost train i guess uh traveled to i think 12 different cities which i mean god knows how many stations they passed through but it's it he had 12 different funerals apparently and uh so i i would guess it's just different stations along that along that route gotcha and yeah, that i don't know if i don't know if my mic picked up on it but at the perfect time the train just went by my house and i hear a train <laughs> i hear the ghost oh, train yeah. right outside yeah. unfortunately i don't think your mic did pick up on it but that would have been pretty pretty that's cool some good timing that's some good timing yeah um, so it's it's a fun one but like you said until we i don't know it feels the most unlikely 
of right, the right. stories we're going to cover on this. Yeah. I'd like to believe it because it is an awesome story. And I hope every single one of those details is true. And I hope someday someone gets some footage of this thing or some photos or whatever. But nevertheless, those are the uh, the ghost trains here on Hometown Ghost Stories. And hopefully we get some more. I'm sure there are more. Hmm. Uh, and then I, I guess the other thing I want to touch on uh, while we're talking about things that may or may not be true is the the photo. So the photo of uh, Mary Todd Lincoln that she had taken after very, very famous photo it was very well circulated, but it was probably complete bullshit. So we have um, the photo. It was taken by Mr. Mumler. This guy was a spirit photographer. He had a lot of pictures that he would take. It seemed like he was taking advantage of people who lost loved ones in the civil war, mostly kind of a scummy thing to do, but also it's like, Maybe it's not that scummy, you know, like you're you're giving maybe he's giving these people closure. They know what they're getting. I mean, they're hiring a spirit photographer and he's giving them results, but it has been debunked as double exposure and not even all that it's much a, tr- trickery going into it. Whether or not like, like you know, the morality of it, right? There's there's a lot of back and forth on whether or not like even psychic mediums nowadays charging people for pretty much the same thing on whether or not that's moral. And I think the argument there is there's a market for it. People are willing to pay for it. They believe it. And if you're providing that service, is it immoral? Because if you don't do it, someone else will. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so you have to ask yourself, is it immoral? I I think it's a little bit different when you're maybe taking advantage of people in a vulnerable moment. I think that's where I kind of question the morality of it, but you also have to question the legality of it. And it seems that entire market, right? No, no, I agree with you actually. And I don't think he should have been charged with anything. And he wasn't a judge throughout the case because these people are getting what they paid for. Right. It, while it does seem like a bit of a con man type thing to do. And while I don't think a single one of these photos actually shows a ghost, He's providing a service. He is a, he's labeling himself as a spirit photographer and he's taking pictures and whether or not he's manipulating the photos, which I, so I guess that's, that's the difference, right? So if he is manipulating the photos, then I feel like that is immoral, right? Cause you're not like a, like a medium is actually, I believe some of them are, are, are phonies, but I, I believe a lot of them believe that, you know, believe what they're doing and what do I know? Maybe what they're doing is legitimate. Right. And well, they are, been- you're right. I mean, there has been so many cases where police are hiring psychic mediums and different Lorraine people. Warren. Yeah, and different people in this field that seem like they're completely legitimate and they know information that there is no humanly there, there's no possible way for these people to to just know these details about things. So I I do believe that there's a lot of legit ones. I do believe that there's a bunch of cornball fake ones out there, and um, I have a special place in my heart for all the hate that I store for, for fake mediums. <laughs> and, and it, it drives me nuts. And I, I, I don't know. I feel like I could sniff them out from a mile away, but. Um, Did you ever see Chris Angel like go on his like takedown of psychic mediums? I think I've seen the clip. Yeah. It's, it's worth digging up and watching because it's pretty, pretty entertaining. Mm, yeah. Kind of like, uh, con, you know, he uh, conjured his inner Harry Houdini. Right. Like that's what, he, uh, that's what yeah, he's maybe, doing. Yeah, maybe that was the angle he was going for. But at the same time, it's like with a lot of mediums, I would give anyone the benefit of the doubt. And and I, I'm not going to just be like, oh, you're a medium. Yeah, you're a fraud. You know, that's just not the way to approach anything. It's also disrespectful. But the, the so anyways, going back to the photo, it was, uh, it's, but if what, go ahead. Yeah, if what he's, if what he's doing is making fake pictures and telling people, like, here, you know, here you are, here's your ghost photo, then that's, that's uh, scummy. He's I'm pretty sure that, it, that is exactly what he was doing. Because yeah, this wasn't so the that. only photo. He was he had plenty of these, and he was targeting people that had lost loved ones in the Civil War. So, I mean, people are going to have their opinions about it. Obviously, the the case was thrown out, so he, you know, didn't face any legal repercussions for that. And I'm sure that this one only boosted his reputation within the people who are seeking out spirit photography. Mm, Rob, what's, yes. your, what's your position on this? Oh, thanks, guys. I was waiting to jump in on this. No, I mean, I'm pretty much on the same page as you, Jesse. I would just bring up the analogy of, Dave, if someone hired you to paint their house and they were like, use this blue paint 
and then you used like a green paint, did you do the job that you were assigned to do? No. So when you do something to fake what you were doing, then you didn't do the job assigned. You manipulated it. So I would say that the job's not done properly. Right. I, I do wonder if in his like marketing or in his sales pitch, he was cleverly wording. That's what you would have to do. What what he was doing to avoid blowback or legal legal repercussions or anything like that. So yeah, let's yeah. talk about the ghost of Abraham Lincoln, though. Yeah, there is so much more to this story than I thought there was going to be. And I had always kind of kept Abe Lincoln on the back burner. We've all heard stories of the White House being haunted, and we've all heard stories of Abraham Lincoln's ghost reappearing. And obviously, his death being in the fashion that it was, obviously unexpected. And his dabbling in the occult and the seances that were being held in the White House, it seems like all of these things were kind of a recipe for his ghost to haunt in the afterlife. And that seems to be the case. And I think the strongest selling point is the list of people that have seen his ghost. It isn't just ghost hunters, right? It isn't paranormal investigators that are like, I feel Abraham Lincoln's presence. You know, it isn't um, these, it, you're, you're talking about current presidents, former presidents, first ladies, family of the, of, of you know, people with a reputation. White House people, aides, like just, yeah. People that this could potentially, you know, not ruin their career, but make people look at them a different way. Yeah, people, people might question their credibility. Right. This is why right. a lot of scientists won't jump into the field and actually legitimately try to prove the existence of ghosts because they're afraid of people questioning their credibility. Yeah, I mean, geez, all the time. sitting president, you know, prime ministers, like these are you know, powerful people that are not afraid to talk about their experience at the White House. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it just helps you. These So the problem that I have with it, it's not the problem, I guess I'm wording this poorly, is we're giving these people a bigger list of credibility than just like, you know, the normal person that owns a house and says that their house is haunted because those people could just be as credible. It's just we know who these people are. Yeah. So that helps us lend like, oh, you know, if Eleanor Roosevelt is telling us that and Winston Churchill is telling us that they are smart people that have done things throughout his history right. that are I good. The most important point is they've earned the trust of millions of people. Right. And if they felt that this was something that would shake that core and maybe lose some of the, you know, some trust that people that people have in them then maybe they wouldn't take this risk of going out and saying, I saw a ghost. Yeah, I think it's not the same as your everyday person who owns a house that sees a ghost talking about seeing a ghost because you're talking about, it's not even celebrities, right? It, like movie stars. We're talking about politicians and politics is all about optics. You say the wrong thing, you do the wrong thing, your career is over. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So there is a whole different level of credibility and reputation that they have to protect. And if they right. are risking all of that to go out and say that they saw a ghost, I feel yeah. like that is different than your everyday person just talking about it. Political careers have been ruined on such smaller things. Think of like, without getting into politics, but with talking about, well, I mean, obviously we're in politics, but I'm talking about it right now, but like, uh, what was his name? The guy that just went, ah! Yeah, yeah, was, uh, yeah. Is that Howard yeah. Dean? Howard Dean, I think. Dean. End of his yep. political career, right there. He just made yeah. a noise. He was excited and he made a noise and that was it over, <laughs> you know? So like I that's think it how... was uh, Dukakis in Massachusetts who put, what, was driving around in the uh, military tank with the big gigantic military helmet. And he just looked like a caricature and he's just waving. He ruined his political career with that move. Yeah. So, I mean, if you, you think that, that that one seems a little more silly, but the, the just the fragility of, of your reputation mm -hmm. when it comes to politics and um, that, that, so you're taking a risk by saying you, you've seen a ghost, but these people clearly uh, didn't care. And they, and they were so moved by what they saw that they, they made it public. And I think that, I think my favorite, my favorite ghost story out of all of these is the encounter with Winston Churchill. Yeah. It was one. just hilarious. I mean, the guy gets out of the bath. He's completely naked. He's of course got a cigar. Cause he's always got a cigar and Abe Lincoln's just leaning against the fireplace, just standing there. <laughs> he's, he's just, that's a good uh, one. You seem to have me at a disadvantage. And uh, <laughs> and I guess they, they, this is the first time I've heard like the ghost just, Abe Lincoln's ghost just like kind of chuckled and then and then vanished. Like he thought it was funny. Like he responded 
So he's 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 going to be some sort of an intelligent haunting. He's obviously hearing and 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 reacting to what Winston Churchill said. I take his word for it. You know, that's a, that, that was that was a fun story. That was um, there was it, definitely a different kind of interaction. It could it could be a residual haunting. There could be that ghost could be going through a cycle where he leans up against the doorway, laughs, and then disappears. It just happened to line up. Yeah, the timing because it. That sounds just that just feels like more of a residual haunting, despite the fact that he may or may not have responded to Winston Churchill's comment. Yeah, it definitely could be a timing thing. And the other one I, I found interesting that I feel like is more of an intelligent haunting would be the fact that he was reading over, I believe it was Eleanor Roosevelt's shoulder, mm-hmm. um, where she could have, but, but she never saw his ghost, but she could always feel his presence and she felt like the eyes just over her shoulder and she felt like he was reading along with her work. And I mentioned in the episode, you know, he was obviously an avid reader and clearly a very intelligent man in his life. And maybe in death, he's still reading along and just kind of doing his work as a ghost. I, I found that one interesting. You know what I found interesting? Like of all of this, there's two thing, two other things that really stood. Actually, everything stands out. But the ghost of his son, William, I believe, having the full blown conversation with I believe it was a sitting president at the time. I can't remember offhand who you said. It was a daughter of a president. Okay. Regardless, it was that was kind of captivating that that happened. But the thing that also stood out to me is while Abe Lincoln was alive, the mirror story was the creepiest story of the entire thing where he's seeing these dual images, one that looks like him dead, right? And his wife's in the room and she doesn't see it. Right, which I do find really, really interesting. And I find this one pretty credible because it was his wife who was way more into the paranormal and way more mm-hmm. into um, the occult and these kinds of things and doing seances and all this. So she was way more of a believer in this stuff. And she obviously influenced his beliefs on it. Um, but I, I think that whole idea was kind of born with her, right? So, so she had, had put this idea into it. And the fact that she didn't see the double image kind of makes the story a little bit more credible. Like Abe's like, I see this and she comes over and she doesn't see it. But then she kind of gives the prophecy where it's like, this is your first term is a nice clear image of you. And then the second term, something bad's going to happen. And yeah. obviously that, that happened. That's so. an interesting um, depiction of what was going on in the photo too. Like mm-hmm. to break it down in that manner, like how you got there. I'd like to know what made her get to that point for for that decoding of what he was saying. That's a great point. Yep. And then the other uh, time that he kind of saw his death coming was the quote that we opened up the episode with, which was a direct quote from. I, I actually don't really know who it was. It was somebody he had told this to somebody, and they had wrote it down what he had said. So uh, it is a direct quote from. The secondary source but so that was word for word where he was basically just he was seeing his own funeral right he was uh walking around the white house during his own funeral and he but he he didn't recognize it as his own funeral at first and he asked the uh soldiers who were standing there guarding his body he's like you know who's dead in the white house and they're like it's the president he was assassin you know he was killed by an assassin and this mm-hmm. is obviously foretold his actual death which is a particularly creepy thing so it's also interesting because he he hops around to a few different locations that he haunts but the prominent haunting is the white house exactly it seems like that is and he's not even you know like that's not a house that he resided in his whole life he was only there for x number of years Mm -hmm. he didn't die there he didn't die there but he clearly resonated with this with this house and that's where the majority of his hauntings occur I would be willing to bet that that's where a majority of his emotion was spent, too. Oh, that's a good point. You know, figure the amount of stress that he went through with, obviously, yeah. the Civil War. You know, that's not something that you want on your resume as a president. I mean, it ended up, in retrospect, working out for him, you know, reputation-wise. But, I mean, the amount, just the amount of st- emotional stress that he went through in that house. Yeah. I mean, it's you, gotta... see it. you see it from the presidents, right? You look at a president when he's first um, elected, and then you look at a photo of them four years later. Yep. It's it's always takes a toll on them, even ones that aren't like quote unquote in times of great distress. They they personally are constantly distressed. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, I just, yeah. It's got to be the most stressful job ever. Half the country yeah. hates you always, and then yeah. 
it, it, you couple that with a war, never mind a civil war at that, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's just got to add, add stress to it. I mean, even, you know, like Barack Obama was looked young and, and, and obviously he was in office for eight years. So, but when, when he, you look at those comparison photos, you're like, man, he, he definitely looks like he aged 20 years instead of eight. So, yeah. so that's, uh, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right about that. So yeah, you have those ones you had, um, the one that I question with the White House would be all of the sightings of him in the bedroom. Now, I understand he did use this room. It's called the Lincoln bedroom. This is not mm-hmm. where he slept, but he did hold lots of meetings here. It was kind of like his main, he, obviously, it's not the Oval Office, but he held a lot of meetings here. But the ones that I would question is why are people seeing him laying on the bed? Now, we don't make the rules. We say this every episode. Maybe his ghost wants to lay down on the bed. I don't know. But it feels like that would be a haunting that would be reported by somebody who doesn't actually know that that wasn't really his bedroom. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I saw Lincoln laying down in his bedroom. It's like, well, why would he be laying down in that bed? It wasn't his bed. I don't even think the bed was there when he was in office. But it's not a, it's not out of the realm of possibilities. And it, sure. And then the other ones are people seeing him it's put a, in quotes. It's boots. a f- sorry. It's a fair point, but like. And I and I agree with you. Like it's a tough one to swallow. But my only pushback would be, we don't know if there was a couch in that room that he constantly lay down on. Um, and we talked about he might just be a not a residual haunting. He might be a uh, I'm sorry, the words okay. escaping me. Intelligent, an, intelligent haunting. An, an intelligent haunting. So if he's an intelligent haunting, he just might use what is in the room. So hey, he sees a bed. He wants to lay down. But I, but I do like, I'm not discrediting your thought. It just, right. And I'm not discrediting these, these people's claims. You know what I mean? Like, like we said, it's completely possible that he could lay down on the bed or sit on the bed and put on his boots like people had seen. And it's been such clear, um, sightings of him that it's caused people to get up and scream and run out of the room. Like like his ghost is seen all the time in the white house and there's other hauntings in the white house too. I left them out because I don't know like there's, there's so much here that we could do an episode just on the White House. Obviously, yeah. we would have to recap most of the stories that we already told or all of them then add a lot more. So maybe way down the line, we, we do a whole episode on the White House. Absolutely. But there's there's been a bunch of stuff that happens here. Other presidents have been seen. There's been singing heard from the fireplaces. Like there's all sorts of weird things that, that aren't necessarily Abraham Lincoln's ghost. And obviously, um, a building like that, that's so important and has been there for so long with so many different people funneling through it every single day multiple people have died inside there and everything that it's a, it's, it's like insane to think that the place would not be haunted. Yeah. I mean, it's a great, it's a great story. And yes, we definitely have to cover the white house in the future on an episode and more of Washington, DC. I think he's even been seen at his monument, right? Uh, Probably. I didn't see anything on that, but I would not rule it out. And he's also said to haunt his former home in Illinois. So, I couldn't find any actual ghost stories about his house in Illinois, but apparently he also haunts there. Gotcha. Cool. I mean, this this was a fun episode talking about Abe Lincoln, one of America's most prominent ghosts. Like, I think most people would tell you that, like, they've heard at least a little slither of the stories of the ghost of Abraham Lincoln. Mm. If not, you've heard it now, and you can share the stories that you've heard by sharing this episode also. Make sure that those people that you share them with uh, stops by Apple Podcasts and gives us a five star review. Yes, absolutely. You want to thank some patrons for us? Yes, our VIPs: Jeannie R, Justin T, Lisa J, Mike B, Mom and Pops W, Stephen V, and Demon King. We also have Anna C, even better hometown ghost stories: Garrett, Jake V, Rachel B, Stephanie A, Sydney B, Anthony, Angry Dave, Rocks T. Brandon W, Brennan B, Captain McSlugs, Cody G. We have Huggy Bear, who is our newest patron. He didn't make it into the credit version of this because I added edited this before he signed up on Patreon. But now you have a big, long thank you right here at the end of the episode, like we promised. Uh, we have Curly J, Mark M, Mariah, uh, Mariah M, Matthew T, Papa Squatch, Sarah R, Sarah W, Solar Flare, Soph M, and Hooper. Thank you guys so much for as little as $3 a month. You can get early access to content just like this. Our patrons all have early access to this exact episode, but also bonus episodes and early access to other stuff as well as ad-free episodes. So if you don't want to hear ads, you can listen right on Patreon. Look at that. Boom. Look at that. Boom. Look at how we hook people up. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Anything else? Well, well that's going to do it for me tonight. Yeah. Well, thanks for tuning in to this edition of 
celebrity hauntings here on Hometown Ghost Stories. We'll see you guys on Tuesday for a brand new episode. See you. Peace. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Jesse Wilkins here, Hometown Ghost Stories. Hope you enjoyed that episode. For more bonus side content episodes, swing on over to Patreon. Get early access to this stuff as well as some Patreon exclusive stuff. For as little as $3 a month, you can join on Patreon and help support the crew. We put a lot of money, effort, resources into these videos, and every little dollar helps. So consider it. Also, uh, swing on over to the Discord. On the Discord, you can get access to us. You can contact us. You can share your stories, share your ghost pictures. Uh, it's just a better way to contact us. So swing on over to Discord. The link is below. It is free to join, completely free. Also, here are some other episodes that you can check out. Boom. Boom. Check out those videos. Really cool stuff. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.